The idea is very much, and this is widespread in archaeology today and, and in paleosciences generally, is that you know, we're not just about the past. We really are trying to mobilize the past to serve the present, serve the future, to avoid some of the worst possible outcomes, that, some of which we can see in the past. In Norse Greenland certainly um, is a worst possible outcome. Uh, it's hard to have a worse outcome in the long term than everybody dying. These guys go up there, they're not terribly well adapted to the Arctic environment, they sort of push their, their temperate zone economy too far. Inevitably the climate fluctuates, it gets cold, they screw up, they die. And now we recognize that, that is much more complicated than that. By combining the animal bone evidence with the isotopic evidence from the humans, we can see the Norse reacting to this climate change by going much more into hunting these migratory seals. And what's interesting is they're not doing it the way Inuit do it, with harpoons. There, there are no harpoons from any of the Norse uh, sites at all, uh, which initially we took as being, oh, see, they're, they're maladapted, no harpoons. On the other hand, if you look at the animal bone collections, the percentage of seal bones goes right straight up through the roof. They intensified their sealing and they did it communally. As far as we can tell, they did something similar to what the Faroe still do in hunting pilot whales, of getting boats together and driving the, the animals either up on the beach or more likely for the Norse into nets strung across narrows. In a way, it's a success story. They succeed and they survive for another 200 years. But then what we're suspecting is happening is, of course, there's a bill for that. Their survival is predicated by getting a large portion of their community, especially young active people, down from where their farms are in the inner part of the fjords out to the outer fjords where the seals are, and hunt those seals, kill those seals, and then bring the seal bodies, the carcasses, back inland. And just some back of the envelope calculations suggest we're talking probably a solid month of effort in the springtime of these guys and gals going back and forth, back and forth through these deep fjords. And of course, they're not sailing Viking ships anymore. They don't have the wood to construct something that size. And we know from both the documents they left behind and a few bits and pieces of archaeological evidence, what they're sailing is something they call a six-sword boat, which is sort of like a big rowboat. Uh, much smaller craft than the Viking vessels, and certainly less seaworthy, especially if it's loaded down with seals. Somewhere around 1430, 1435, somewhere in there, you have this flip over takes place in storminess, and the, you go from having a, a calm mill pond like North Atlantic to one which is like today, or even worse. So you think about what you're seeing here is sooner or later, a big storm's gonna come in at the wrong time. These people have, have survived by adapting, by specializing, by going this direction, down this road, being really good communal seal hunters. But that very successful adaptation is making them vulnerable to specific kind of climate change. In this case, probably not so much cold, although cold's bad news too, but the storminess is the real problem for them. In any marine adapted economy, hazard is a big problem. The sea always wins eventually. So again, this issue of vulnerability that's being created by having these small, not terrifically seaworthy vessels out a lot, going sealing, going fishing, in a context in which the climate is changing and going to, from a, a less stormy to a more stormy situation, we think this is a potential here for causing catastrophic loss of life in Greenland. And of course, Greenland was a small place. You know, there was maybe 50,000 Icelanders in the high Middle Ages, maximum maybe three or 4,000 Greenlanders, so not very many at all. So as you can see, it doesn't take too much loss of life to really push you over a threshold where then you just don't have the people to, to carry on.